We've set a challenge for two maths teachers from Framwell Gate School in Durham. They're being summoned to a mystery location. Right now, neither teacher knows their destination or the topic they'll be teaching. Their lesson needs to be ready by 2 p.m. this afternoon. It's the unknown, isn't it? It's the unknown side of things. It's, it's exciting, you know, it's a wee bit scary. Yeah. <laughs> They're on their way to the Baltic Arts Centre in Newcastle and they're about to meet contemporary artist James Johnson Perkins. And really, I just want to get them to be as inspired as they can to make things, you know, how, how can they do that, you know, and make things that are bigger than themselves as well, which is nice, isn't it? The challenge for the teachers is to create a cross-curricular maths lesson using applied art. What I would like you to... Dr. Elaine Fisher is assistant head teacher at Framwell Gate, and she's been teaching maths for eight years. Kind of get used to the setup of your classroom and how things will work. So the idea that we're going to be doing it in a totally different environment will be really interesting to see the effect that it has on the type of thinking that we do in terms of our planning, but also the, the way the students respond as well. Her colleague NQT Rosalind Taylor has a background in engineering and has been teaching maths for a year. The creative side is probably where my strengths lie. Um, sort of thinking up different ideas and Elaine's quite good at sort of keeping me keeping me down and then like saying okay let's see how we can actually put that into a lesson. Awaiting them on the roof of the Baltic is a box of three specially chosen resources. These are the vital components of their lesson. Ready? Um, random weights and some rules about bridges. It's 8.30 a.m. and our two maths teachers are speeding their way out of their comfort zone. I hope it's algebra. Yeah. Or number. Al Albert, algebra's nice because you can link it yeah, to so, so much different stuff. The quayside surroundings of the Baltic and the box of resources should provide them with enough inspiration for their lesson. Let's hope so, because by 2 p.m. this afternoon, they'll need to be ready to teach a class of Year 8 pupils. I think a lot of people don't really like maths. I just can't do it. Not very good at it. Certain things I don't really like about maths. Just... Like, I don't understand some things, but then it's a challenge, so you can work on it. In maths, you just need like a, um, like a practical side to work stuff out. I don't like the idea of doing shape stuff. Shape stuff, shape stuff's harder. I think, I think that's... It's more constrained, I think. Yeah. Right. Are we close? Right. I have no idea. That's the trouble. I don't even see. know where anywhere is around you here. You don't know Newcastle, though, do I don't you? Know Newcastle Whereas at, all. at least I know Newcastle. We go out. Right, where are we going then? You're, you're, you're local. No. Which one? It's the Baltic. Huh? That's the Baltic way. Where? I think that big building coming up there. What building? This one on our left. Wow. What's the Baltic? Have you beat? <laughs> It's, re it's an art, a contemporary art gallery. An but art it's gallery. really modern. It's got an amazing view out down there, down that way, so you can see all the bridges and down, right down the Tyne. <laughs> oh, it's something we know something about. Well, that's alright, I don't know anything about art. <laughs> <laughs> Art's not one of my strengths. I can paint, but I don't know anything about art. Oh, dear. I know the view. Yeah, the bridges are really cool. I really like the Millennium Bridge in particular. <laughs> Hello, Hi. Uh, I'm James Johnson oh. Perkins and I'm nice a freelance artist oh, here, here at the Baltic Gallery. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. If you look here, we've got a box mm -hmm. and here's the key. And inside the box, there's, there's, <laughs> there's objects that you can use to inspire you for this lesson that you're going to be doing. So open the box. You can open the box. <laughs> Ready? Uh -huh. Ooh. Ooh. <gasps> Sequences and bridge lines. Oh. See what happens to it. Thank you. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> cool, that's really random. <laughs> Well, they use it to take over the bridges, don't they? And some oh, weight. It's a bucket as well. Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. There's something else. Oh, oh look, there is. Oh, oh it's a. Watch, Watch me! me. <laughs> it's like Alice in Wonderland. Yes. Excellent. Well, the bridges is good. 
sequences, patterns, different bridges. We've got bridges here. Although I find the coal really random. <laughs> I don't know what you think. Yeah, I think it's the coal. But the others, well, even the weights to a certain extent. This I can see in the surroundings. I mean, there's lovely al algebra what we wanted, right? We yeah. love algebra. Yeah, um, so that's and good. the pattern and sequences, the bridges. The weights, I can see a, I can see a link there. Weights and bridges. Yeah, I can see, I can yeah. see links there. Strength. Definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable now that I, I actually... I like knowing. I'll, now I know what it is. Like yeah. my, my brain, I feel like my brain's already working. I need to find out if this is going to tell us what our actual topic is. Yeah, but, I, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with so far. Right, so we're going to watch the DVD, and then mm. we've got a couple more surprises for you downstairs. More <laughs> surprises? <laughs> OK. DVD. Let's go. <laughs> the objects in the box have been specially chosen by two experts. First up, Adam Goldwater from the Discovery Museum in Newcastle. He has some tips on how they might use the coal and weighing scales in their lesson. The objects that I've chosen for the students to use are a bucket of coal and some scales. Coal, black gold, is really the foundation of the prosperity of Tyneside, uh, the Tyne, Newcastle, Gateshead and the region. The challenge of getting coal quickly and efficiently from the coal face to export from the River Tyne is really seen all around us in the bridge designs, yeah, uh, the railways, yeah. uh, the staves that we use to uh, load the coal onto the ships. So the maths uh, could be brought in to examine the real life context of uh, the bridge designs that were subsequently built to allow the greater ships through. That would be nice, wouldn't it, to have something that has a cross curricular link with the kind of history yeah, as well. Is that something, yeah, that you know, my passion. <laughs> exactly. You're engineer. Engineer in history. More what more do we need? Yeah. Artist. <laughs> and the artist, of course. Right. The second object we have here is a set of uh, scales and measures. The teachers could use these as an activity to measure out how much coal could possibly be loaded onto, um, first of all, the small keel boats, and then larger and larger ships. Bearing in mind that coal itself doesn't come in, in a uniform shape or size, uh, putting it into a real life context and, and a context that would have had to have been uh, considered in the past. I was quite surprised by the coal, but then obviously, like when me and Elaine started talking afterwards, like yeah, obviously linking to the sort of the mining history, I thought yeah, it makes sense. I mean, for me, my background's in history and maths, so the kind of links between that, I really like the opportunity to kind of link the two subjects together. The equation B equals two J minus three, showing the relationship between joints and beams, has been placed in the box by Steve Humble from the National Centre for Excellence in the Teaching of Mathematics. He's also got some tips on how they could use the space around the Baltic in a lesson. An interesting thing from a mathematical point of view is that this space, the, the, the river is the same width across, but different engineers have used different techniques to span that space. So I think it would be quite interesting to get the students to try and look at the different curves across the river and see whether those are the same shape curves for the different bridges. Yeah, because scale, scale factors. Scale, proportion, it's kind of, all that yeah, kind of stuff. That's going to be good. Angles. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Angles, yeah. So using this formula would be a good place to start because what it'll do is it'll give the students uh, an idea of how many joints and beams they need to construct their bridges if they build them with this type of construction. In some ways that was much more the comfort zone because you get the board with mathematical information, a sequence, you think, oh, I can do that because that's maths, that, that I'm happy with that. At that point you've got everything open to you, you've got safe routes, you've got more adventurous routes, you've got totally wacky routes and it's kind of up to you to kind of say, right, well, I'm going to take it and go down this sort of angle or whatever. James has one more surprise left for them. He's giving them a much bigger classroom than they're used to. This is the space that you're going to be working in. Wow. That's quite, uh, <laughs> quite big. Impressive space. It's very blank. You've got very simple materials to work with. You'll be thinking about things like structure, you know, you may do things like that too. Little curve. I sort of have a quite a good knowledge of maths. Really, I'm a maker, I make things. I'm interested in, you know, the process of uh, putting things together and 
and really I just want to get them to think, make, be as inspired as they can to make things, you know, how, how can they do it, you know, and make things that are bigger than themselves as well, this is nice, isn't it? Something like that. I've actually taught maths in school, so I've got quite a sort of maths brain. In fact, I won the maths prize when I was at school. <laughs> but how you do that and how you use these materials to, to work out a mathematical maths lesson is up to you. But we would like you to use all of the space. Okay. Whatever you're making, it's going to fill the space. Wow. I think it's great, isn't it? I think it's, yeah, I like the idea of having loads of space spread about and kind of, especially with it being like quite practical based. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I love the view. I think the, the idea of teaching in a room, a space like this, where you've got the view out there to kind of keep them inspired with the kind of topic and the bridges yeah, is fantastic. Yeah, and, and linking that into what they're actually doing yeah, and hopefully definitely. seeing the whole real life context thing is really good. Now they've got all the ingredients and with their year eight pupils arriving shortly, it's time to start planning. I can appreciate and enjoy art. I've never particularly had a great strength in doing anything terribly artistic, and I think that you kind of, outside your comfort zone, you perhaps panic a little bit. It was, it was all really appealing to me, and the whole idea of filling that space was a challenge. It was like, okay, we've got all this massive space, and I mean, yeah, it's a little bit daunting, because it's a massive room, um, and you think, okay, you know, we've only got an hour for a lesson, we've got to fill the space in an hour. Yes, that's, you know, that's quite scary. Let's could do a bit of a sort of brainstorm yeah, thing, first all. of all. Let's put bridges in the middle, shall we? Yeah, so we've, we've also got, got the coal. We've got the coal. Scales. Scales. We've got outcomes, haven't we? Outcomes. outcomes. They need to. They need to build a structure. They need to, yeah, there needs to be a structure built. See, it's this idea about. I'd like to get this into it more. Well, what about if we start with something looking at the bridge designs? So we're talking could, could about the different that bridges that are out here. Because if you think about the bridges we've got out here, we could get them to think about. We talked about the history, didn't we? Perhaps asking the question, what questions? Inquiry-based learning, then there's questioning. So, our problem is going to be that we've got the space to fill. We've got the space to fill, yes. Could we give each of them a time mirror and they've got to build a bridge according to that time mirror? And, but you could make it that they've still got to have a certain object of a certain height, like someone, like a person walking or something's got to walk underneath each bridge and to, the, to represent the ships. And they have to be able to justify why they've chosen the design they've happened and what are the strengths of yes. it. So the end bit what, is what, that yeah. they present the, yeah. the bridge with the rationale for but then, why it's good. So they've got to get the maths. I've got a bit of maths, right? We've got the river. See, that represents your river. And see, right, okay, that's the distance of the river. And then say, well, you've got to work out what, we say the ship is uh, 25 metres, whatever, right? They've got to work out what that would represent on their scaled model. Something must be able to travel under your bridge. An object of height X must be able to travel under your bridge. OK. Because that links to the whole transport of the coal. I wonder if we could find an object out there we could borrow yes. that's like one of the kids' toys. That looks like a ship. Yeah, right, OK. We'll find something that looks a bit like a ship. So then we say the ship is 25 metres high, they have to work out actually what height that would be in the scale model to represent what they have to kind of go over, do you know what I mean? So, so a bit we're getting portion. scale. So we're getting scale and portion into there. I like that idea. Because that, that's, that's cute, that's definite math content. Hello. Hi. How are you? How are you getting on with your planning? I think we're just about there, aren't we? Pretty much. OK, so we're going to say to them, this is the success criteria that they've got to meet, which involves them building a bridge, and doing a little presentation describing why they've done what they've done. OK. And while they're doing that, the information they'll have available to them is they'll have the board that we were given, they'll have you as the art expert, Okay. they'll have us as maths experts to ask. Sounds really good. Go right. and get ourselves. Let's go. Yep, let's, let's go. go. Elaine and Rosalyn have decided on an inquiry-based lesson. They'll be challenging their Year 8 pupils to use mathematics combined with applied art to design and build scale model bridges that will fill the gallery space. What do you think we'll think of it? I don't know. <laughs> do you enjoy it? I mean, I hope it's, so. Oh, hopefully it should be great. I hope so. But I think once we hit on the idea that we wanted it to be an inquiry-based lesson, that was the kind of key point in terms of moving our thinking forward, uh, because we were able to realise that if we were going to base it around that structure, we could use the stimulus we had from the various objects and build that into getting the students engaged in the kind of big challenge activity. OK, can we start by getting ourselves in a circle around the bucket in the middle, please? Basically, we're here next to the Baltic, OK, which is a contemporary art museum, and we're sitting just on the edge of the time, OK? Looking around you, what I want you initially to think about is what sort of maths can you see around you, OK, with a particular reference on the bridges, OK, so thinking maybe about shape, things like that. 
maybe looking a bit with history as well, okay? Just quickly jot down your whiteboards. Talk among yourselves. Quickly jot down anything you can think of that you can see that's linking to maths around you. Uh, the bridge side. With the tension. Oh, the tension. Be, Good work. It's got to be strong enough to hold, like, so much weight. Okay, what we're going to do now, guys, is I want you to look at what we've got in the centre here. We've got a bucket of coal, okay? Which might seem a little bit random. My challenge to you is how does that link to our surroundings? Okay, so thinking about how the coal links. When we're taking us along the rivers, you've got the bridges, and we need to think of ways we can get the coal underneath the bridges. Yeah, like so starting to think about the bridges and looking at the bridges around us and the height of the ships and things, yeah? That's a really nice thought, and that's a thought I want us to take on when we go upstairs now, OK? So, let's move upstairs. And they came up with some really obscure ideas that we wouldn't have thought of that were fantastic and instantly kind of getting to much higher level topics than we would have thought of in terms of the tension and strength and so on of, of bridges and something that um, showed they'd really kind of thought around the objects rather than just writing objects down and seeing what they were. Now it's time for the students to meet James and start designing and building. They've got the coal but decided not to use the weighing scales. I mean, it could have opened up really into quite a big sort of two-week two project, easily looking at the weights and things like that. So the scales themselves, we kind of left them there to use, um, and the kids could use them if they wanted, but they never, it never, they never really sort of involved, because I thought that we could use everything. That was the thing, because we had so much. You can see that we're in this amazing space here in the uh, Baltic Art Gallery, and what we're going to do is we're going to set you a challenge. So your challenge is to design and construct a bridge in the style which will be given to your group, taking inspiration from your surroundings and the bridges around you, your bridge must be able to cross the River Tyne. What are all the questions that you need to be asking in order to help you to solve that problem? You need to know what's going under it as well how wide the river is, because there's no point having the bridge too short. Yeah. And they generated some great questions to do with the strength, the weight, the width, the questions they needed to ask about how wide the tine was, about what it might have to support, what kind of traffic was going to go over it, and some really interesting ideas. Like the swing wedge and the green one, they don't have supports, but them are the ones that have the semicircle over the top, so maybe that supports them a bit. What do you think, what do you think, see how the bridges, I mean they all look different don't they? What do you think, what things affect how a bridge looks? I think initially we were both thinking yeah we need to go down some sort of algebra route because that was where we both felt most comfortable. But actually we never really went down an algebra route at all. Um, we went down much more of an applied maths route which actually turned out sort of really well and it was a geometry route which I don't think either of us would initially have said we would have gone down a geometry route but it was just, I think almost we were inspired by that environment as well as the kids. You need to construct a bridge which will allow a boat, this is our boat, which is carrying our coal up and down the river, and this has got to be able to fit underneath your bridge. A nominee from your group must also present for two minutes at the end of the building session to tell us exactly why you've chosen the design you've chosen, what the maths is behind it, and why you would persuade an investor to invest in your bridge design. So I'd like to introduce James Johnson Perkins, who is a freelance artist who works as a consultant at the Baltic, and who is here able to give you consultancy advice on your bridge design. So any questions about kind of how to make it what size, how do you make it the structure of it? How do you make it strong? These are the materials that you're using. So you've got boxes and you've got tubes. So you think about how you're going to put those tubes together, how you're going to make your structure, how big is it going to be, how's, it going to, how's this going to fit underneath? OK. And you take your inspiration from whatever you see out there and from whatever's in your imagination, OK? Got it? OK, that's your task, guys. I think we need about seven carbon. 23 centimetres, like each floorboard. That's 1.2. 
one point two there. Yeah. So what do you think you need to make it a little bit stronger when you look at all these other bridges? Like maybe... Uh, you need to look at yours and say what you think is going to make it stronger. No one said we can't take the cardboard boxes to pieces. Like actually building things you have to build in 3d so it's a lot harder than you think because you have to think about the shape and uh, the volume and area of it what I would take from it is the confidence of, of, of just letting them go it's shown me as well how valuable it is and how you can see how much enjoyment the kids get about it. they're all engaged they're all on task and there's hardly I don't think there was anybody who was sitting doing nothing they were all right in there and the, the interaction between each other the social skills they were developing as well as their math skills was fantastic to see think, how, how can we use that in a box to create something that's going like that yeah, and I thought a lot more maths came out than we'd thought of I mean, we certainly hadn't thought of the idea of the angles of the bridge that, that James was using to work out his angles so that he had the right number of boxes to make the arch work. And I think, you know, it shows a lot of kind of higher level thinking in terms of their approach. Well, we're supposed to be building an arch, so we're using the tubes to prop up the boxes to make it lean over so it makes an arch shape. And then it'll be quite high as well, so I think they're Working in a classroom, you don't come across problems that you come across with real life. In a classroom, you just write it down and you don't need to prove it, but hey, you've actually got to have proof, like the width, if you can't make it wide enough. You've got to try and adjust it, and that was quite a big problem we had. It's going under it, it's all right. Okay. So, part of the our concern was them having enough time to actually build the structure, and I think we were a little concerned when we were planning that they might not have an actual finished bridge. Um, we're not sure if we've got enough cylinders to make the triangles to make it strong enough. Uh, we need another tube on one end to attaching two of the pillars so they'll actually fit across the river, the bridge, otherwise we're stuck. brilliant to see that they all had a finished structure um, and they could all explain merits about it which was nice. Oh, no <laughs> Super. Excellent. Okay James do you want to share your presentation with us? The curve is created by when you put a cylinder between two boxes it elevates it and each one of these is about 15 degrees so it's about six to make 90 degrees. I think if, if we'd have made the angle a bit smaller, we could have had it a bit more like a circle, couldn't we? Because we decided on that. But I think it's a really, really good effort. Yeah, brilliant. We should be really pleased and proudly. So give yourselves a pat on the back. Excellent. <laughs> OK, the team over here, who are the truck bridge? Well, if you put triangles, like, a line across the top mm -hmm. and maybe down the middle, that gives it a lot of strength. I'm really loving this, the shapes that you've made and the triangles and pretty similar to the bridge down there as well, it's pretty similar. I, I, I described this one as brilliant and I described this one as awesome. Excellent. <laughs> All right, thank you. Shall we have a look at the final bridge at the bottom then? Yeah, it's interesting, is it wide enough? Oh, uh, it looks like it's just about wide enough. Oh, it's just going to go under, super. So what we've done is, first of all, we've taken the fact that the boat needs to get under. And if you were really going to build this, we've taken the idea that each box would represent a height of five metres. And, each, and two metres across. So in total, you'd have a bridge about 35 metres high and about 32 metres wide. Then down here, just for an extra bit, we've just added legs sticking out the side for a bit more interest and further stability. We, we talked in our planning about looking at the actual sort of scaling up to the river, which one group did without us even saying anything to them. They're like that, oh, well, this is actually scaling. The river would actually be this big, and they'd estimated the size of the river and things like that. So it was almost like, yeah, giving them, I think, giving a, a group of students like that, the freedom that we gave them, really let them sort of take off in their learning and they could kind of explore however they wanted and the different groups were exploring different things and getting different things out of it, which was fab. I really like the fact that you've used different shapes and different 
kind of um, it looks very sort of sci-fi and a bit very modern looking and I really, what I really love the difference between the different shapes of all the, all the three different bridges like you really all thought about how you know how's it how what shapes you're going to use what the structure is all that kind of thing that one at the end is awesome and I think this one has to be described as amazing so all in all I think you've really good effort well done back to all your hard work if you've been inspired to try out teaching outside the box, how about contacting your local art galleries and museums? They can often set up tailored challenges to suit your class, or even loan you themed boxes of original artefacts and images to use in a lesson. You can find some useful web links on the page associated with this program at www.teachers.tv. Now the last thing that we want you to do is we want you to in your groups, evaluate each other's bridge. The more abstract links, like linking with art, actually it's, it's really motivating for both us and the students to think differently. Um, and it would be great to do more of that kind of thing in the classroom. It's much better being able to work things out by yourself than having to take your teacher's word for what, like, if, you, if this is what a circle is, then actually being able to work out what it is by yourself and what will work and having to try it. It's like really good. It's like you, you're better off because you're in more space and you get to work and move around and do what you want really with what you're doing. It's your own ideas. But I think it's just, it gives me confidence in, in that style of teaching mathematics and just really encourage me that actually, yeah, that is a really good route to go down away from this uh, the traditional classroom board teaching. This is something I'm trying to get away from anyway, albeit we can't always take them to the Baltic and to the bridges, but you know, even just getting pictures of real life things and saying like, let's take inspiration from this. How can we then sort of apply math skills to that is something definitely that I'm, I'm going to take forward.